This is Michael Orl of MobileBurn.com, and today we're looking at the Nokia N97, the second S65 edition touchscreen equipped smartphone to come from Nokia. This is their new flagship device. It features a full QWERTY keyboard and a very large touchscreen with a 640 by 352 pixel resolution. It is a resistive touchscreen. As you can see, it requires some bit of pressure, and we'll show you that later on. But first, let's look at the physical aspects of the device. You can see a large display, a uh, series of sensors and forward-facing cameras up front. This is the S60 button, pulls up menus and uh, goes back to the home screen. Call send, call in buttons. Not much else on the front of the device other than the Nokia logo up here. On the left hand edge we have the micro USB connector for data and power and a spring-loaded lock mechanism. So you just pull it down to activate the device and slide it down again. And always snaps back into place which is kind of nice. On the back we have a Carl Zeiss powered 5 megapixel autofocus camera. You can see it has a sliding lens protector here with a dual LED flash and the lens underneath. Whenever you slide the lens protector down it automatically activates the camera. Sliding it back turns the camera off. On the right edge of the device, we have a volume control and a dedicated camera shutter button. You know, it's a two-stage button, so you can press it a little bit to activate the autofocus and press it the rest of the way to take the actual photo. Up top, power key and a 3.5mm AV port. Uh, handles not only stereo headphones, but a TV output function. Microphone hole on the bottom. Uh, the big deal on this device, though, apart from this touchscreen, is the full QWERTY keyboard. Now you can see, in spite of the size and the amount of room Nokia had to work with, they chose to go with a three-row layout. Uh, normally I would think this is a bit of a problem, but Nokia actually did some unconventional things that make it work a lot better. Uh, for one of them, they put the uh, spacebar on the far right here, so it's actually quite convenient. When you're typing along, you know, it's, it's in a very convenient location and it doesn't mess up the layout of the other letters. You know, the, the letters line up appropriately, even though there's only three rows. D-pad on the left is a little off-putting for some, but uh, really not difficult to adapt to. The real problem, and the press has been getting hit pretty hard, is uh, the feel of the keys themselves. They, they really have limited travel, and some people are reporting that there's no tactile click at all. Uh, it doesn't feel like they move at all. I haven't had that problem personally. They seem to work okay for me. I'm relatively pleased with the keyboard. It's not the best I've ever used, but I'm pretty pleased with it overall. I want to spend a little bit of time looking at the hinge mechanism on the device. You can see it doesn't just slide out, it slides out and up. And unlike uh, some of the HTC devices that have this same kind of uh, form factor, there's no adjustment to it. You can't change the angle. You don't have the option to have the device lay flat. It only opens up and tilt. Uh, again, not as flexible as uh, some of the other devices we've seen on the market, but uh, in spite of that, you know, it does seem quite secure. There are two contact points on the left edge and one over here and it seems pretty rock solid from my perspective. You know, I'm not slamming it around on the floor and things like that but it doesn't feel like a, a potential breaking point uh, so it's got that going for it at least. Uh, in spite of the keyboard though, uh, I'm not really impressed with the physical design of the device. Uh, for, for a device as expensive as it is, I think it's going for $699 at this point, um, you know, subsidies taxes, all that kind of stuff, not included in that price. But it's just for a flagship device, it's kind of lackluster. Um, you know, it's not much you can do with a really large touchscreen on the front, but it just, it just lacks style to me. It doesn't feel cheap or anything like that, like some people are saying, but I'm, I'm just not really wowed by it. One of the highly touted features on the device is this new widget-based home screen. And you can see there's a number of different cells here, and then we have some various widgets loaded in, you know, two different contact widgets mail, uh, calendar appointments, that kind, some sh keyboard shortcuts or menu shortcuts up here. You can rearrange things, uh, edit the content, say so we can rearrange the order of things, move everything around nicely. can also uh, remove widgets. We just remove that widget. We can add a new one. A lot of different things you can choose from, um, but overall we haven't been really impressed. Uh, the weather one seems to work only intermittently. Uh, the news, I don't know, it just seems to add a lot of 
burden to the CPU, which on this device already seems slightly underpowered considering its uh, top-end stature in uh, Nokia's model lineup. Let's pick something from Bloomberg here. It'll populate and automatically download the data. You can see we've got a 3.5G HSDPA connection here. Data is pretty fast on this device. Reception is very strong, so it does have that going for it. You can see that the widget home screen also works in landscape orientation. Um, Nice in principle, just uh, maybe a little weak in execution and probably hindered by the relatively slow CPU in the device.